Today is Ash Wednesday. It's the first day of the season we call Lent. These are the 40 days leading up to Easter. It's a time of special focus on your relationship with God. Ash Wednesday is kind of a unique day. It's not the, the happiest, most positive of days. In fact, it's a day when we clear away all the pretense, we stop pretending, and we get real serious about who we are. We get real honest with ourselves and with God about the brokenness we find in ourselves. You see, each one of us is fallen. Each one of us is really, well, if we're honest about it, we're kind of a mess. In fact, the, the biblical word that's used there is we're full of sin. That's not a word I like to talk about a lot. It doesn't seem real happy. But sin, well, sin really actually describes us. It's a word that means we missed the mark, that we've gone in the wrong direction. And I know, at least for me, I find so many ways in my life when I've gone the wrong direction. In fact, one way I like to describe it is I have habits and things I've chosen that lead me in a way that leads towards death. And so on Ash Wednesday, a pastor uh, will often put ashes on the forehead of his uh, people and say to them, from dust you have come and to dust you will return. That's this reminder of the direction we're headed. We're headed towards death, little deaths that we experience every day because of the choices and direction that we go. But that, that story has a lot in it. The idea of from dust you'll come and to dust you will return. You see, that echoes back to the first story in the scripture. The story of creation. When God is creating humans, it says he Takes, takes up the dirt and he breathes life into the dirt. The very name Adam just means dust. It means dirt. It doesn't say a lot for us. It's just a reminder that we're really just dirt. We're broken and fallen. And yet, we're also people of this incredible promise see, God breathed life into that dirt. He can breathe life into dirt and, and bring it alive. And so on Ash Wednesday, we don't just make a smudge uh, of ashes on your forehead, but we do it in the sign of a cross. That sign of a cross points to something more, not just to your brokenness, but also to hope. Hope that says if we start with confession, if we start with being honest about who we are, that God can begin to do work in our hearts and change us, to send us in a new way. One of the words that you often use in scripture is this word uh, to repent. That word repent means to change direction, to head in a new way, to head in the right way. And as we're honest before God, God begins to bring change in us. And this is what we remember on Ash Wednesday. Today, I, I want you to spend a little time reflecting. I want to start you off with the words from the psalmist, David, as he was honest before God. This is Psalm 51. Listen to these words. Let them be your words today. It says this, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Our creative arts director, Schatz, has written a song for us. It's a song to help us over these next 40 days focus our hearts and minds on God. It's a song to help us pray. I want you to take the next few minutes and listen to this song and open your heart to God. Let this be your prayer. Restore me. 
Christ to our home for the lost generation. Make your presence known. Father, hear our prayers today. Hear our honest, not really very eloquent prayers. You know us, God. You know how broken we really are. You know that no matter how hard we try, we can't climb or crawl our way into being the people that we want to be. And so today, Father, we open our hearts to you. We ask that you would come in, that you would cleanse us, that you would make us new. And that you would begin to send us in a new direction. You would begin to breathe life into me. Make us into the people that you long for us to be. We pray this today. Amen. Thanks for joining us on this 40-day journey. I want to really encourage you to find some time, carve it out of your day for the next 40 days. That as we go into the time of Easter, that you would uh, put an intentional time and space in your calendar to focus on your relationship with God. We've got three ways that you can join us in this journey. The first is that we have some actual physical prayer journals They're at our church building, and if you can get there, uh, we'll give one to you. Or if you reach out to us, we'll find a way to get it in your hands best we can. That journal will give you a space where you can write out prayers before God and keep track of prayer requests. And it has a calendar of the things we're praying for together as a church. And here's the second way. You can text in and become part of our list. And if you're on that list, you'll get a text message every morning. And it's a real short one. It'll just give you a link to a short video that'll lead you in prayer. And it'll tell you the two things that our congregation is praying for each day. We're going to join together as a whole congregation and be focused on the same thing in prayer for the next 40 days. There's a third way that you can connect. We have an app. It's called the Echo Prayer app. You can download that app if you like to connect in that way and follow our congregation. If you do that, you'll be able to interact with each other, to put up prayer requests and pray for specific things. I want to encourage you to find a way that works for you to engage in prayer and to join us as we come together as a whole church for 40 days to begin this next season of ministry in a focused time of prayer. Man, thanks for being part of this journey. Thanks for joining us. 
I pray that God does incredible work in your heart and in your life and in our church in these next 40 days.